three days before the show <laughs> featuring Dillian White mm. against Oscar Rivas mm. between a fighter who was 26 and 0 and a fighter who was 27 and 1. Mm -hmm. Both stock was very high. Mm -hmm. Three days before it's now emerged that Dillian White failed a drug test for two banned steroids mm -hmm. that he should not have been taking. Yeah. Now, on the basis that that is true, how is it possible in this day and age, bearing in mind the safety of fighters, mm -hmm. that the border control, the British border control, not the African one, not your one, <laughs> not, they're, not your one, they're, 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 they're completely exonerated. You know, so. We're innocent. innocent. We're innocent. <laughs> and the promoters, yeah. Matram, mm -hmm did not inform either the WBC, mm -hmm. who were the sanctioning body, or the boxers camp, Revis's camp himself. How is that possible in this day and age? What went wrong there, Mike? What in John, oh, oh, you want to start with no, 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 I'll you start with Mike? Until Dylan White comes out and says, <laughs> um, I'm guilty, I, I took these um, um, banned substances, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, he's innocent until proven guilty. Well, that's if, a very valid point. If valid point. all these these bodies that, that you've um, listed um, knew that he had these um, these um, substances in his um, system and his body three days before the fight and said nothing, as far as I'm concerned, um, I've done nothing wrong. Well, he's done nothing wrong. Yeah, I mean, the other thing as well, the other thing as well, to be honest, is who's really to blame? It's not his fault. Yeah, who's, not who's, who's really to blame? And Why don't you t if you told me mm -hmm. that there was something in my system yeah. that shouldn't be there, then at least I'd have the. the well, mind so, to so, say, so, so oh. the question is so let me pose a question to you guys. If does you're going to say, speak, did he know? No, no, I'm oh, saying, okay. does that speak to the corruption of boxing in itself? Because obviously we wanted, they, you know. You wanted the crowd, you wanted to get that payday, you wanted, you know what I mean? Well, that's all what it's all about. about. Which is what it's all about. So really, it's, but it's Hope's, the fact that... But Hope's got a valid point. Oh, no, of course. In saying that it's not really Dillian White. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. not Dillian White. I didn't take no, the test. And, and you, took the te you took my test. Yeah. Tell me the result and tell the rest of the world the result. You gave me a pass and three days after you told me that you're telling me that I didn't pass. I ain't having that. I want the pass. I, I did nothing wrong. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it speaks to. I think it speaks to what needs to be looked at: the corruption around boxing, as a whole. You understand? Because what happens is the failing came from that body that looked at that test and know that it was a fail, and didn't push that forward to say no, this fight cannot happen. The fight happening was more important than. Well, that's what that's yeah. what you know. That's what seems to be happening. But it's come in a very unfortunate week. Yeah. Because this week there's been two deaths in the ring. Yeah. There's yeah, been that's the an Argentinian who got a swelling on his brain mm -hmm. against a Uruguayan down mm -hmm. in Buenos Aires and mm -hmm. he passed away mm -hmm. on Thursday morning local time. Mm -hmm. And two days before that, there was the Russian Max right. Dadashev who yeah. um, was pulled out of his fight by Buddy McGirt. Um, unfortunately, he had to have a piece of his brain removed. And it just shows you what a dangerous sport it is. And, you know, health and safety of the fighters has got to be paramount, hasn't it? I think it's like what you said as well. <clears throat> Supposing the test showed that there was something wrong beforehand. Would they, let, would they have let their fight go on? Well, the brain scans, the, the, the annual, in most countries, including UK, there's an annual brain scan requirement. So every year you have to go for a brain scan to have what's called magnetic resonance imaging or angiogram, MRI, MRI brain scan. That's done once a year. But if you're taking a pounding in sparring mm. and you have a number of fights, you know, the annual brain scan, you could be coming to the end of that. Yeah. The annual brain scan, there's no, you know, if you... So, so if that's the case, then something needs to be changed in the way it's done. I mean, well, the, 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 ultimate ch the ultimate change would be this. The ultimate change would be for a boxer to have a brain scan before every fight. But I'm afraid that is completely impossible mm -hmm. because that would reduce the sport to absolute chaos. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't be administratively possible. I, I personally know how hard it is to run around with boxers and try to get them brain scanned in Harley Street or wherever. It's absolute wrench. It's expensive and the promoters wouldn't be able to afford it, even the big ones. So, you know, I think the sport, having said that, in NFL in, in, in the United States, mm. um, a lot of NFL players that were from 20, 30 years ago are now coming out of the woodwork and launching suits against the NFL yeah. because of brain damage they suffered. So 
So do you we, think that will start happening with boxing? It's very possible. Well, eventually. Yeah. I mean, but the contact sports ha- have, have to look at themselves and, and decide how they're going to um, play it. Or and, and with that in mind, mm. with the All-African Boxing Board of Control, mm. the WBC have a very clean boxing styles with drugs and everything else. Mm. Uh, they're no angels, yeah. but at least they've got that. Yeah. How you can, you know, have some comment as how the AA BBSC stance mm. on health and safety. What, what is it? Well, I mean, we've, we've, we've brought the highest lev- level of health and safety to African boxing from what it was before. So can you break down what it was before and how I you mean, changed it? I mean, what it was before was non-existent. Non- there was no brain sp- scan, there was no medical, there was no ambulance on standby, there was no, I mean, it was non-existent. So if really. a show could go on with no paramedics, no ambulances, nothing, and if someone gets injured, so be it. I mean, they were just cutting corners. And, and another thing about it, John, when we started, um, um, it was one of those things of where it was very hard to get the boxers and their managers or, or whoever to do the right thing to understand. No, if you come in underweight or overweight, you can't fight. They, didn't, they couldn't compute it. They were like, what are, you talking what, about? what are you talking about? And I mean, we're here. We've just traveled to another country. No, no, no. It has to be like this. Because first of all, a lot of our rules, we've mirrored it with the um, British Boxing Board of Control because yeah. obviously they've got good rules and why wouldn't you want to follow something, you know, um, 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 that's good. But we always had a trained doctor. We had, you know, um, an ambulance on standby. We, you know, we had blood tests done. We, we, we had all the necessary tests that could happen in Africa. And we want to continue to up the scale of the safety level that we can bring to African boxing. We're not at the pinnacle, but we're almost... At the pin, especially for Africa, we're doing what's never been done before, you know, um, and we'll only really keep on improving. Well, that's really good to hear because mm. it's such an important part of, of, of boxing going forward, and mm. it's going to remain this massive commercial giant. Mm. Taking the opportunities for African boxers and, and, and members of mm. the AABBSC and boxers promoted by Alpha Male, um, are you going to have a dual program whereby you obviously have a lot of shows in Africa that builds their records and everything else? That's that's something that that we're um, we're about to start. Where um, you mean in terms of getting the boxers? Well, what I mean there. what I mean is is that in the past boxers' records get get padded, mm-hmm. um, and by any country, if there's not a massive significant home base they they will travel abroad to get paid mm. as opponents mm-hmm. so in traditionally african boxers have really been opponents because there's been no great shows there's not a massive commercial scene in africa for them to not to have to travel so they've yeah. had to travel yeah but it seems to me i know in ghana they built a brand new boxing stadium yeah, yeah, yeah. Boxing, right? it's yeah. only a couple of years old it's doing great yeah um are you going to develop the boxers to ship them out as opponents or are you going to develop the boxers and develop the live shows in Africa or we're, both? We're, we're going to do both of them. Right. So we're, like I was, we're going to have boxers start coming over. Um, we're going to start um, working with um, UK um, promoters. Yeah. Um, gradually um, filtering um, our boxers so they can get recognition over here. And fights. And, um, and fights. Yeah. And then um, at the same time, build um, what we're doing over in, um, in Africa. Yeah, well, I mean, that sounds the right way, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, um, I can't say the names because obviously it didn't happen, but mm. I think you was aware of, um, um, we had two legends of fighters, that um, two heavyweights that were supposed to fight in, in, in Gambia. And um, it didn't work out because of external issues that couldn't happen. But you know how boxing is. Sometimes things don't turn out. <laughs> of course, you know what I mean? But one of the things that we want to do is, and we're going to do it, you know, a lot of the things that we spoke about, we said we wanted to do, we've done it from the last time we've spoken to now. Um, but one of the things that we want to do is also be bringing um, some of these big names to Africa. You know, since the whole rumble in the jungle, you know, which was such an iconic thing, um, and this is what we try to do with the last... The, last, um, the, 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 the thing is with rumble in the jungle, yeah. the, the, the crazy part about it was... it. It was a black man fighting a black man mm. in Africa. Yeah. And the Africans warmed to Muhammad Ali yeah. more than they did to George Foreman. Yeah. Right? yeah, yes, of course. Um, 
And that's why they supported Ali. Ali's Bombay. Yeah, Bombay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Which is a legend, you know, yeah. it's become a legendary part of, of, mm. of, of boxing. Yeah. Um, and, you know, to be fair to, to um, President Mobutu, mm. mainly because of his own vanity as much as anything else, mm. he, he got a full stadium. Yeah. And that was sold out, actually. Yeah. My yeah. word was that sold out. Yeah. And it created yeah. an iconic situation. So there is a template to follow. Of course. And, of course. You know, with, with shows like that, you know, that when, when Africa does it, it does it well. We've had excitement about the possibility. And um, with Open Eye, the vision has always been Africa, you know I mean, and wherever else. Merging the two together. Because what I, what I don't want to do and what Hope doesn't want to do is we don't want to just keep building boxes only in Europe. We want to also understand it's that. You understand? It's already happening in America. So we want to be able to. in Mexico. Mm. Yeah. It's happening here in the UK. It's not happening in Africa. Yeah, and we've, look, we've got, we've 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 got beautiful hotels. We've got beautiful beaches. Exactly. We've got stadiums that holds twenty thousand people. Other venues that holds holds ten thousand, fifteen thousand people. Um, the world has changed where you can have TV rights well, to to be in, in. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's in Africa; it can still be viewed here on Sky well, Sports or whatever. Well, exactly, and that's yeah. that's a major issue because yeah. one, the advent of social media, just for argument's sake, there was. Mm couple of months ago on a show up in Scotland promoted mm. by the Sourland people mm. uh, they had a jack that really good jack against a Puerto Rican mm. both were unbeaten yeah how 20 years ago that would never have happened mm. why would a jack against a Puerto Rican big money fight happen on a show in Glasgow mm -hmm. because the TV rights were yeah. accessible all the way around the of world of course which is what's changed now which yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, massive yeah, yeah. massive yeah, thing yeah, so you yeah. could have a show yeah. amazingly enough going back to the rumble <clears> in the jungle that that show was, was, was in cinemas all over the United they, they, because it was such a big fight, mm. the media at the time absolutely went out of their way to get it shown in close, they used to call it closed circuit TV. Mm -hmm. So in a way that was the forerunner of it. Yeah, yeah. But, but now with social media and everything else, it's a, you can have a sellout show in the Gambia, or a sun out show in Mali, or a sun out show in And it can still be a sky or and it can still be a sky television. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, that's the, the beauty. In fact, I'm getting excited as we're speaking. Yes, well, look, we've got... Yeah, I mean, we, we're on. Yeah. Yeah, I mean we've got... Look, look, we've got... The, as you know, not only do we have the template for it, we have, we have a proper mm -hmm. presence in Africa and African boxing. You understand? We've spent the last five years not sitting on our hands. No, I can you see. You understand? You know, so we have the, the template and we have the, the presence and we can make this happen very easily. So the last fight that didn't happen, like I said, we can't say the boxer's name because if it didn't happen, it didn't happen. Yeah. But, you know, when people had a sniff of it, of these two fighters possibly going to fight in, in Africa... I mean, people were so excited. They were like, oh my gosh, this... I mean, I, I mean, people were willing to travel to go and watch it, which is actually good for the country. So we know this is it's just a matter of time. It's going to be sooner rather than later. That's going to happen. Okay, let's... We, we've, we, we've got the brand here. It's mm. obviously you're going to build that brand. Mm. You've already made great inroads in the last few years. The timing is right. The boxing has exploded globally. The purses and fees are going to be very, very high. Mm. Let's look at governance. You set up the AABBSC, which is starting to make inroads and, and starting to um, organise African boxing as it should be organised, as it is. Or every territory, look, we shouldn't be under any illusion. There's territories other than Africa around the world that are not organised. So, ladies and gentlemen, to all the new viewers of Alpha Male Television, it's been absolutely fascinating today. The great discussion here with the two chief executives of Alpha Male and the All African Boxing Board of Control. It looks like we're all going from strength to strength, and we look forward to seeing you again in two weeks for our next edition of Alpha Male Television.